Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a first impressions video for you. I feel like I've done a bunch of first impressions, but it's just the way it goes, guys. You know, sometimes when it rains, it pours. And normally I'm able to, to kind of mix these in with a few reviews or discussion videos, but it's just been so busy. So I've got a bunch of videos that I really want to make and I just haven't had the chance. Uh, first impression video though is quick. I can pop this thing in front of the camera, tell you guys a little bit about my initial thoughts. And so that's why it's been pretty heavy in first impressions lately. Uh, I'm hoping that next week it will slow, things will slow down a little bit and I'll be able to get some of the other videos that I want to do, uh, some reviews and some testing videos done. But in the meantime, first impressions videos, it is. So we have here a Lion Steel. Uh, when I reviewed, or when I gave you my first impressions on this knife, this is the Lion Steel M4. Uh, a number of you started talking about other line steel knives that I should pick up. And in fact, I had already planned on doing that. And this one was already on order. There are a couple others that I'm kind of, you know, toying around with. But at this point, uh, this is going to be my Lion Steel collection for now. Um, this, of course, most of you will recognize it, is the T5. So let's get this guy out of the sheath and I can share a little bit with you guys. It is a big knife, so you can see I've had to back the camera off of it. I'll bring the M4 in at the very end for a little bit of a comparison. Let me clean this up a bit. There you go. Okay, so Lion Steel. T5. This will be a little bit of a closer look. It'll be my first impression. Uh, this is a fairly large tactical survival style fixed blade uh, done in nylock steel um, by Lion Steel, of course. Really, really well put together. Really, really interesting knife. Now, uh, let me warn you, if the blade looks weird, these ship with this really kind of sticky oil on it, which is great for protecting the blade, uh, but it's really hard to get off so you actually I haven't had a chance you need to like actually clean these with like soap and water or something uh, and switch it out for your own oil uh, because the stuff they come with is quite gunky and and you know it's there's still sort of a thin layer of it on the blade even though I've tried to clean it off with a paper towel all right so let's get into uh, a little bit of a, a discussion on this blade on this knife and I'll just kind of show you the features and uh, talk a little bit about the things that I that stand out to me initially. And then, of course, when we get time for a full outdoor review, we'll do that as well. But this will also serve as a really nice close look at the knife. Often when you're outdoors, you don't quite get to, to really get a good look for just the knife all by itself. And so this will serve that role quite nicely if, you're, if you've watched a few other videos. And I've actually watched a few reviews of this. And often I'm like, can you guys just slow down? and let me take a close look at this knife and really appreciate the details. So we'll try to do that in this video as well so I don't have to worry about it as much when I do my outdoor uh, full review. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, this guy has uh, nylock steel on this blade. We'll come back to the blade in a second. We've got this really interesting, so it's full tang, and then this really, really interesting micarta handle that is first and foremost a thing of absolute beauty look at the way they've done this 3d machined micarta it is incredible absolutely beautiful beautiful knife and of course no question you know it's it's definitely not a form over function type of scenario here this feels wonderful in hand it the ergonomics are spectacular which is exactly what you would expect from a knife this nicely machined it is a moletta design the other thing that's cool is as you look at the front here, you can see the way they've done this handle is to actually, you know, do it like, like Lion Steel's kind of famous for in their folders. This is sort of one monolithic piece of micarta, and then they've milled this out to fit. And by the way, when they do that, you know, I could see, man, they're going to have to be so careful. How did they get, uh, you know, they can really mess up the details here, but they have done a spectacular job. So look at the fit and finish the the perfectly crowned back of the the tang here just really really great and a little bit of the tang exposed for uh for any kind of crushing task either you know banging someone on the head uh which i don't know <laughs> when you've got this on the other side if you're dealing with an opponent um this may be not the best thing but in a survival situation that's really really helpful to break rocks to break open nuts uh any kind of pounding task you need to get done uh there is the lanyard hole there 
I'm not a big lanyard guy, but it is there for those of you who really want it. And then again, this nice deep finger choil uh, really, really feels fantastic in hand, not to mention looks absolutely beautiful. So let's come back to this blade and spend a little more time up here. So we've got a nice big blade over four inches, over five inches, I should say, in length. Uh, nylock steel. Now, nylock steel is pretty interesting. Um, a lot of custom makers really like it and they harden it quite hard and find really, really good performance out of it. Um, the Lion Steel, uh, everything that I've been able to see and read and study about this says that they have done a really, really good job with this as well. You often hear this comp compared to D2 Steel. A lot of the reviewers that you'll watch will compare Nylox to D2. Now, I will say this in my sort of preparation, I found a few real steel nerds who disagreed with that uh, because they said, you know, maybe although it was based on D2 Steel, uh, the the performance is quite a bit better. It takes a finer edge. Uh, it can be ground thinner. It sharpens a little more easily, holds an edge a little better. So, uh, well, well, it's often compared to D2 steel. Uh, the consensus view out there seems to be that it's quite a step up. So obviously I've just gotten this and I'm just kind of beginning to share this with you now. So I can't speak to any of that stuff. I will say this, Pete over at Cedric Native Gear and Outdoors said that this edge wasn't, you know, optimal for cutting performance. And so he reprofiled his edge. Now for review purposes, I won't do that until after I've spent a little bit of time with this. And maybe I never will. Like if I, I this is what I always do. I have lots of knives, so I have the option of switching if I need to do a different task. So what I'll do with this is do some cutting tasks with it, you know, take it out to the bush, do some whittling, carving, different stuff. And if I really find, man, this edge just isn't doing what I want it to do, then I'll go ahead and reprofile. But I I like to at least put some time and energy on an edge before I make that decision. And I've got to say my initial impression, and you guys can take a look at this too. Hold on. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little bit better. So as I look at this edge, it doesn't seem that bad. Actually, it seems fairly good. Now I haven't gone and measured the angle or anything like that. So it's very possible that it's a little too obtuse, but I don't know guys, for a thick, like, you know, we've got pretty thick blade stock here. This edge seems pretty thin. So I'll, I'll, I'll try it out a little bit. I'll spend some time with it and see what I think. Sorry about the, the focus there. Um, <clears throat> and, and let you know, but th those are my initial impressions on the blade. Again, a beautiful blade, this nice top swedge here, sort of drop point design, carries a lot of thickness out to the tip, which is going to make this quite substantial. If you're going to do some batoning or something like that. Uh, really, really helpful that way. Uh, let me quickly move over to the sheath. We haven't got a chance to look at this sheath yet. Uh, this sheath is really, really impressive, guys. Uh, really impressive. So uh, very nice retention. I love the way, you know, they've really nicely wet molded this. The snap is very stiff. So <laughs> we'll see. I haven't had this on a belt yet because again, we're, this is, we're just doing first impressions. So I'll have to update you on how I think of this snap, but I can tell you initially it's very, very stiff. It, it may break in and become better over time. But if you look at the quality of this sheath, look at the way that this is finished. It is really, really impressive. By the way, this can come out and this is, you know, can be weaved into molly webbing. So if you wanted to carry this like, you know, on your pack or on your, uh, I don't know, tactical vest or, or bulletproof vest or whatever, if you're a soldier, uh, police officer, that would definitely be a possibility. Uh, for me, this is gonna be primarily a, a woods, you know, outdoor survival type of knife. And I think in that role, it's gonna do pretty good. Again, I haven't had the chance to, to really put it through its paces yet, but we will. And I've got to say for that purpose, I think this sheath is really, really nice. I, I generally prefer Kydex, but if it's a knife that I'm not planning to EDC, and this is definitely not an EDC knife, then the Kydex really is not that important because it doesn't need to be as thin, doesn't need to be as concealable. You know, when you're walking through the bush with a knife on your hip, it's a pretty normal thing to be doing. So uh, <clears throat> a bit of a, a different animal there. All right, now let's get this guy out and I'll just show it to you with the M4 for a second. We'll spend a little more time perhaps on this and some other comparisons in the full review. So you can see this is a fairly large knife, okay? We're definitely dealing with, you know, this guy's around eight inches. So we're dealing with, you know, nine and a half, 10 inches. So this is a large knife for sure. Uh, 
let me, I'll throw the, the line steel back in its sheath. And uh, just give you a quick rundown on the specs before I give you my overall impression. Okay, so very quickly, what we've got for overall size here, we've got a full 5-inch blade, 4 and 7 eighths on the handle, and 4 inches of grip area. So this is a substantial knife. It's definitely big. Now, I will say this. It's not really a knife you're going to be doing chopping with. It's just not weighted that way. Uh, there are some knives like this that maybe have a little more weight out toward the front. Uh, but generally, you'd want something even a little longer than this yet, okay, for, for any kind of chopping. This is going to be great for batoning, great for... Uh, camp stuff, I suspect, because that edge is quite thin. Again, we'll update you on that. But let's give you my first, my initial impressions. All right. Uh, initial impression are, first of all, a fantastic build quality, absolutely beautiful piece of artwork. Okay. And then in addition to that, a really great practical outdoor survival uh, or tactical type cutting tool that I think I'm going to enjoy using a whole lot. All right, so that's my initial thoughts on the Lion Steel T5. I will do a full review where I, you know, do some cutting with this, take it outside, compare it with a bunch of other large folders. Uh, that'll be coming down the line. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want one of these, go over to White Mountain Knives. You can use my discount code to save yourself 10%. A uh, huge thank you to Justin for doing that. Uh, fantastic arrangement. So yeah, go over and look for one of these at White Mountain Knives. Hopefully, Justin's got a few in stock. He tends to carry a few line steel fixed blades, so good luck with that. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks for using that link, and we will talk to you soon.